I know the disappointment some of you must have that uh, the person with the experience that I have with these machines should probably uh, be like a Ward Cleaver or something instead of a, a, a chunky doll that had his nose bit off by a dachshund and they sewed it back on and fell off again. Yeah, you know, I had to put it back on myself. So, but anyway, you, you get what you got here. So, here, here's the module. And, you know, there's a lot of talk of modules and stuff. And blah, blah, blah. But what I'm going to point out on this thing is the trouble spot. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the best evidence of that trouble right here. You got to have evidence, and I've got it. And here it is. Look at that burn mark there. Can you see it? Yeah, get this over here. Yeah, see, it's all burnt right there. And if you flip this around, this is the cover, and put it back down, it's right over Rectifier 3 right here. Now Rectifier 3 is, is the most trouble uh, part of the module. And I'm trying to think of the best explanation what it does. It, uh, oddly, when uh, the power is converted to uh, 220 volt direct current to power the motor, and what's coming off of the field tube, 125 volts there, it still has that 60 cycle pulse. You know, it's not, it's not straight DC like a, like a car battery. It's, it's got that 60 cycle pulse that the AC does, but it's doing it with the uh, DC. So the, this Rectifier 3 um, fills in that half cycle they call it it fills in that gap so the uh, if I if I can get get this right so uh, the control voltage that come off the uh, uh, the control reference voltage that comes off that small transformer in the electronic compartment that's what that uh, basically, from what I understand, this rectifier three. Okay, now let's talk about these rectifiers. There, there's 14 diodes here, and they make up, I believe, four rectifiers. And it's here, it's here in the uh, module box. Here you got rectifier one, rectifier two, rectifier three, and rectifier four. And uh, these control different aspects of the drive system. And the module here, if there's a problem anywhere in the machine, this is really a good place to start, find out what section of the control the rectifier is in, and then check, check these uh, diodes here. Now, a, a rectifier, uh, two, two diodes, these are the factory stock old diodes here, and they're they're, they're a regular diode. Let's, let's get them wrong here. Here's the, here's the, the belt fed diodes here. So these factory diodes just have a diode inside here. And the reason they're in a case is it, it, it kind of helps uh, uh, explosion proof the way, you know, in case it's around a little bit of uh, uh, flammable fumes or something but it, it, it'll be contained in here pretty much but <laughs> under certain conditions these things will go off like a firecracker it'll blow that case apart and and uh, burn the inside there just, just like that um, I want to caution you if, if you're going to work on this thing uh, attached with the cover off wear safety glasses and don't touch anything here it'll, it'll, it'll shock the crap out of you if this thing's powered up. Um, so what, what I've looked at, I had a bit of hiccup in the machine, I've looked at rectifier three diodes, I popped one out and tested it. And, you know, they're, they're okay, but I can see looking at them close that they've gotten hot, and they do get hot in that rectifier three, and heat destroys the components. 
there, there, there's a few other of these diodes that get hot too. And you know, when I get a hiccup in the machine, I do the shotgun approach. I, I replace all the diodes. And uh, the fact you can buy them from the factory, uh, but the, these are quite expensive. You know, I don't know how much they are. They're over ten bucks a piece, and uh, I, I think these are ten cents a piece. You know, this, I got these on eBay from somebody that uh, sells this kind of stuff. And uh, then I just welded on, not welded, but I, I soldered on these just little quarter inch disc. And uh, th they go in here, I'll pop one out, because I'm, I'm going to change these things. Uh, the, the stock diodes will only go in one direction. These diodes are polarized, okay, so it, it's not going to go that way. You have to flip it around. And see it, it, it snapped right in there. So what you got to do is, is you look at the factory diode and it's got that little notch and, and uh, your cheap replacement that, that works fine has a little band there. And so that's the directional way these things go. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with diodes, let's, let's just check this thing real quick. Show you something pretty cool. Yeah, it works. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna set this just a little bit over here, and um, let's check this. See, there's nothing. Now let's move this over here. You see that? What this is is uh, <clears throat> an electrical one-way valve, and uh, it. Uh, it just lets the electricity go one way. And <clears throat> to construct that uh, full wave uh, um, bridge rectifier circuit, it takes four diodes. And you set them up so the direction that bands go in the same direction, just like this, like that. If you put AC current to these two corners, you can pull direct current from these two corners. It's called a bridge rectifier. Okay, it, it, it's a simple thing, and it, I wouldn't be afraid of it. You just want them to work. You know, you want to test these things, make sure they work, and and keep your eye on rectifier three, <laughs> right there. Now another thing you can do to help is uh, the adjustments. I'll get into that a little bit later, but here they are. Uh, the compensation, this one says comp, and, and hey, shut up up there. Gotta yell at the dog that bit me. Um, the, um, uh, this compensates for load. Um, this is what sets this lathe apart from every other one, uh, of the time anyway. Um, when when the spindle's under, lo under load, this device uh, will not allow the spindle speed to drop within capacity of the five horsepower drop, of course. Okay, this is the maximum speed, and the maximum speed of this lathe is 4,000. You can adjust this so it goes faster than 4,000, but it affects this over here. You, you, you want to do what the factory says. And, they kind of work off each other. You fiddle with this one, then you can fiddle with that one, and you get it back and forth and, and, and tell it's right. The instructions for doing that is, it is right in here. Uh, it, it's not that big a deal. I, I, I'll, I'll probably show it, you know, actually doing it. Um, okay, to make things easier, uh, where these locations are, you can drill. You can drill these holes and adjust these pots without disconnecting everything and pulling this cover off this thing. And uh, you know, it, you can put a piece of tape over it to keep dust out. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to say about this thing, and it's important, is you really want to protect this plug because it's not replaceable, no longer manufactured. So when you remove this thing, 
You even got studs to protect it when you set it down. Thoughtful. This is the screw that goes through. And you should lock that that tube board that this tilts down on. You should lock that solid. And when you remove this, support it and carefully unscrew this. And the screw will actually push push it off that plug. And you just want to really be careful and be aware of that plug. You know, it'd be a disaster to wreck that. Yeah, throw that in. Okay. So I believe my hiccup is just these diodes are old. They've been in there several years. I run the lathe really hard. You know, I tend to run it a little less hard now. But uh, okay. Uh, We'll get this thing back in, and I want to get that lathe fired up and get that oil circulating. So that'll do it for now.